you start, we should start with the most dangerous, most uncomfortable, like nerve-wracking one. All the other ones are. It's cake. Brave soul. Do you have any active complaints right now? Anything going on? You have symptoms? Okay, good. Uh, all right. Can I have you live on your back? Head up here. <laughs> Bless you. What did you say yesterday? Health, money, right? So let's just check. The easiest cervical screen in the world. We might be a little bit more limited to the left, but not by much. He wants to protract. It's about equal, but I, I felt his, his chin wants to protract. If I did him in a more protracted position, he has more mobility either way. But, when I, but here I feel like there's more resistance. Like if I just did that, he could go. And also, you know, if, if I put him in neutral, he has a hard time getting the neutral. And then beyond. If he has a hard time getting neutral, he doesn't have the expected 10 degrees of after cervical deflection. So if he had symptoms on the left side, he met, he met the clinical practice patterns for left side, like left shoulder uh, restricted in extension and IR, thoracic rotation restricted on the left, I would manipulate his left side to restore ability to load the left. Ideally, so he's more relaxed, I, I would want to start him in physiologic neutral. We'll put him on a pillow. But there's lots of components to this. We'll go over them one by one. If my intention is to do a left cervical translatory thrust, I'm going to do a little pressing and guessing and feel for a restriction. Which group of three to four vertebrae feel stiffer? X-ray vision is telling me it's C5-6. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my um, the medial por or the lateral portion of my second MCT, so right here. Just lateral to the spinous process on the left. Because I'd like to say I'm on the zygopophyseal process or the or the um, zygopophyseal arch, or, uh, but but you know you're just on the back of the neck. You have to have a scalpel, remove lots of skin, muscle, and fascia, and then you're on a facet. No one's on a facet. Um, the easiest way to think about it is that I'm on the back of the neck, lateral to the spinous process. The assisting hand, the ulnar border of my assisting hand, is just on the occiput. So I want to have the ability to take my fingertips all the way up and down the other side of the neck for a shear. And the assisting hand also is going to move opposing the manipulation hand. So if I move this one this way, this one is going to go this way. It's going to help the manipulation. Um, clinical instructors or manipulation instructors just teach thrust with one hand, but that doesn't make any sense because if, you, if you're rolling a ball, both hands need to move. Plus, your non-dominant hand is always helped by your dominant hand because both hands are always moving. I would suggest when you practice with your partner, regardless of whether they meet the patterns or not, you can check for that. Manipulate, choose your dominant hand as the manipulation hand first. I do thumbs, I do thumbs off and I, that's a bit more comfortable. There's a lot of great manipulators out there that put the manipulating hand thumb on the mandible. And that's traditional and I used to teach it that way, but I got punched so many times in the jaw that I stopped. Say thumbs off. <laughs> and you really want to do thumbs off because what everyone wants to do is this, and that does not feel comfortable because. <laughs> After you gave them an informed consent that told them there's a 1 in 1 million to 1 in 10 million chance they might get a stroke or die, you do not want also <laughs> to do this. So if I looked at other things, like if they had risk factors like high BMI and high blood pressure and. Um, they're a, a smoker, 
those are those are kind of risk factors that might make me think maybe I don't want to do a cervical breast manipulation. And as an aside, even when someone is a chronic smoker, they've been shown in studies just not to recover from musculoskeletal complaints. Interestingly enough, even people in the middle of a study who actually quit smoking, even though it wasn't like fast enough for them to all of a sudden to be healthy again, they actually got better. Better in terms of cancer risk, but better in terms of their <laughs> neck or back pain. I don't, I don't really know how to interpret that, but it's maybe it's like if you have the willpower to quit smoking, maybe you're more compliant with your therapy. So the first thing I'm going to do is a pre-manipulative hold. I'm going to put him in the position of manipulation and make sure he doesn't have any uh, adverse symptoms. All right, I'll, I'll just do a right to manipulation for you guys on that side. Deep breath. That's what I was waiting for. <laughs> Great. You know, one of my also another indication of manipulation is that it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, we think it's awesome. The patients are like, whoa, I heard that. That did something. But then needling, there's no other technique that makes people go, wow. Whenever I said, whoa, did you see Urson do that amazing median nerve mobilization? <laughs>